Alright, hello everyone, my name is Shep, welcome back to the Witcher Circus. Today we are going to be watching a match, or not only one match, but we're going to be watching three matches of myself playing probably one of the most trollish stress protection teams there ever is. So we're playing against Adam Barreto, so this was the second match that we played against them. The previous one I had played this team, but they were playing stress, and uh, it just ended up being a pretty solid win by me with the flash one, because that counted my absolution if I recall correctly. But, considering this matchup here, is that we have a team ready with that protection. So my Crusader has 60% protection right now, the Man of Arms has 50% protection, the flash one has 30, and the Arbals has 40. So the minimum amount of prot we have is 30, and the Man of Arms can just keep spamming bellows. So this team is definitely made to counter Mark teams. And as you will see right here on this matchup, things are not going to go very well for my opponent. I'm going to put that out there right now. So the Arbos, you know, famed for her one shot, is going to go for a sniper shot and do a grand total of 12 damage onto my own Arbos because there's a Bellow debuff, there's protection, you know, there's the 40% protection that she has. She has, um, she has her own trinket called the Medic's Full Point, which gives, a, gives her an extra 15% protection with the Block of Light. It's just absolutely brutal. So my opponent already changing the marks because he kind of realizes, eh, taking out the Sarvels isn't going to be so easy, but, you know, if there's two marks, you just flare it. And you also flare the Count Vigar, the debuff, so you see me hovering over it. Though for some reason, for some bizarre reason, for over two years, it, uh, it has just taken an extra few seconds to disappear. No one knows why, it's just a red hook coding, I suppose. So now the Arbals is gonna flare a singular <laughs> Bellow debuff. <laughs> and you know what happens when you flare the Bellow debuffs, right? There's just gonna be another one added. Now I might add that the, the reason the Arbals barely did any damage is because she doesn't have the piercing quarrel, so she cannot break through the extra 20% protection that she normally can. So that's kind of, like, the teams like this are the reason you bring Piercing Quarrel, because if you don't, and you run into a team like this, it's just an immediate defeat, as, as you're gonna see right here. I'm being very straightforward with the outcome of this specific match, well, especially when consider it uh, how usually I... I commentate on other matches because we're gonna see another ones that are gonna be very close but this one I kind of just wanted it to be the example of what you can actually do and what you can achieve playing a team like what I have here and it's not a bad team by any means you have heals with the flash one to, to reclaim you have heals with the crusader you have a big heal with the arbos with the medic's full plate and you also have the potential of guarding with the men arms so you're probably gonna be using uh probably gonna be using bellow and if you're not and you might be using command and bolster and you might be wondering, well, if it's so good against Mark and it ha if it has so much protection, like click this Crusader, yes, two protection trinkets, Palace Card Helm, Pit Fighter Helm. Like, it's, is it gonna do any well against other kinds of teams, like stress teams, uh, DOT teams? Well, against DOT teams, probably not, uh, unless you can resist some death blows by them rolling zero. Or like with a, an anti-current festering vapors and against stress teams it's not that bad because you still have a bolster and you have a flange on to it content of absolution numbing incense so you can actually win some very very clutch matches like that so the r plus goes sniper shot rolls for eight and that's the surrender so let's go and see another match here so this is the second match that we're going to watch and this one's going to be a little different so we're playing against little ghosts and they have quite a novel team quite a novel matchup they have a shield breaker with full dodge pierce so not the usual shield breaker you'd see she's kind of in a damage team here but you know she can definitely cause the pain to my characters even though she doesn't have blights Pierce is still going to completely bypass my protection and all that. So there's going to be an immediate uh, sacrificial stab. I mean, I would have loved to go first because I would have gone Bork immediately, but since I uh, since I get to go second here and there wasn't any stuns or pulls, I still get to do that. So there's going to be an immediate sniper shot crit. So that was a, uh, like a 39% crit chance, I believe, because the Arbalist, the enemy Arbalist, in fact, does have piercing quarrel. So even though I have 50 pro, it just crits me for, you know, like two thirds of my health bar. So that's pretty annoying. But I drop a claim on the Man of Arms. So if he does get dropped down to zero, he can heal out of this store and we can heal him with the battlefield banners. So we do have that going for us. So there's going to be a push here onto our flash. Doesn't really matter all that much. I don't really mind. And I'm just going to heal here with the Man of Arms. I heal up to 14 which is pretty good, and the shield breaker has a damage debuff on her, so Pierce normally does 8 to 13 damage with the debuff, it's going to be even less, and yeah, she 
kind of get some max roll on that, but it wasn't quite enough. Here I'm just going to go for kind of a weird play. I'm going to go for a Suppressing Fire, just trying to do some stress here earlier rather than later. I think in hindsight that was probably not a very good play. I could have just gone for a heal, and the heal would have prevented the Sacrificial Staff from dropping me to this door. It would have made it so the only hit I could have dropped me to this door was indeed uh, the Sniper Shot, but oh well. I reach out of this store. I still have two heals available, so I, do, so I should be essentially kind of fine here, maybe not, but there's a lot of attacking action, but I, my healing actions have protection uh, coming along with them, so that's pretty good. So there's going to be a sniper shot there, it does hit me pretty hard, but I get to go for a heal right now, and I heal 10, which is the absolute minimum, which I'm very annoyed about, not gonna lie. Also, this was after like three hours of playing, because I played a lot with this team, and yeah, there's the second pierce, and that pierce just killed my soul, because it crits, for 11, like I had 10 HP and they crit for 11 despite the Shield Waker having 2 damage debuffs. And now I can heal, but the, the Bounty Hunter has Collect Bounty. This Bounty Hunter is one that actually has Collect Bounty, so he's gonna go for it. And he does enough damage with it despite having 2 battle debuffs, but... You know, at this point there really wasn't much I could do. Despite just praying that uh, that bounty hunter would get punished for being greedy and not bringing the the finisher, but he goes for a finish him, drops it onto our man of arms, and there I'm gone. And like after three hours of playing uh, with a team like this, like I was trying again and again and again to have really close matches to try and make a really fun video here, but you know I just I'm just absolutely raging at this point. And eventually with the amount of stress that I have output, which is basically nothing, and uh, with the advantages that my opponent still has here, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go down kicking and screaming, but I will eventually go down. So my characters are gonna get focused down slowly, one by one, and I will try to prevent it. I do end up killing the bounty hunter, but uh, there's just. It's just too little too late, because the Men at Arms dying that early meant that I couldn't keep spamming those battles and eventually I didn't really have a shot. So let's skip on, not quite to the end, but almost to the end. And my Flagellant was definitely doing a heroic last stand here, but with the sacrificial stabs and the pierces and not really getting too, signi too significant of afflictions, like Shieldbreaker went Masochistic, which you know helps, but it didn't pass. And because she can't pass with that, and the arbalist I think went, um, I think went selfish or something, but I don't recall her even passing at all. Or maybe she went abusive. No, actually, I think she went abusive. Well, I can't really recall, but it didn't matter in the end. And yeah, let's move on to the third match, and this is going to be the the most uh, the like the more important match here, the, the one that we actually want to watch. So I was playing against Sparta Bule, and considering that they were just wailing their mouths all over the place, I am. Uh, I am assuming that they do know who I am, they do know that I was probably uh, recording at the time and, you know, they just decided to do that, and I did it too. You know, it's pretty fun to see people that actually know who I am and playing against them and going for some cool matches. So they are playing the Halo comp and decide to go for a very interesting uh, second action block of light. I mean, the block of light is almost always worth it. Like almost always worth it, because protection is always a good thing, right? You just can't go wrong with having protection. But in a matchup like this, where you kind of want to get kills early, especially with the Halo comp, not going for a stun is very weird. I see the reason that they went for it was because they didn't want me to get double value with the flare, like just clearing the mark and clearing a stun, because if they had gone for the stun and then gone for a pull, you know, I would have been I would have been totally fine here. I would have just flared it away and I'd be a-okay. But yeah. I do have extra move resistance with this Arbus because she does have the Exotic Snuff, so I have about as defensive of a setup as you could have. The Flagellant did have Exotic Snuff before, but after a few unfortunate matches against stress teams, I just decided to switch it out for, Gaunt for um, the Numbing Instance, so now I would actually take like zero stress against stress, and I would essentially have a really good time against them as well, because that's kind of the matchup I was really suffering against, and I just want to see how I would handle teams like this. So here I just drop her a claim on the Arbus. Actually, this was after the match with Little Ghost, so I was really, really self-conscious here. Like, I did not want to lose this one. <laughs> I did not want to lose this one. After having done, like, a mistake or two, like, a couple of misplays here and there after a very, very long gaming session. And, I mean, the thing is, you play three hours of Minecraft, and, I mean, you're chilling, right? You're totally chilling. You're just enjoying yourself. You're playing Minecraft. You can go for another three more if you if you do love the game that much and if you do have the time for it and it's, like, on a Saturday or something. But when you're playing the Butcher's Circus, if you play Butcher's Circus for three hours, 
hours, you're going to be raging, most likely. Like, this game has the potential to make you toxic, abusive. This is one of the worst games to play ever if you want to have a good time. I'm, I'm just putting that out right there. Unless you have a friend and unless you're both going for, like, you know, let's go for the crit finale and go for that fun stuff. And you're actually trying to go for win streaks. And you can see, like, I was doing an anything win streak. I had, uh, this was actually a mistake, like, it should be 1-0 right now because I won the, the previous match against the guy with the Halo comp, but... Uh, no, not the guy with the Halo Comp, I meant the guy without the Halo Comp. The guy that did not have the Piercing Quarrel on the Arbalest. I should have put the, the number down, but you know, I was just anxious to get to the next match. And come on, let's make this team actually work against someone with a with a Piercing Quarrel. Let's see and if what we can do here. So yeah, the Arbalest gets pulled, so you know, even with the exotic snuff, there's kind of like the oh, she's never gonna get pulled, right? Because she has snuff. No, she, she'll get pulled eventually. It's still a 45% chance for a bounty hunter with grappling mids, and it's just really, really annoying. So the Arbalest does get put down to the store here. We're obviously gonna go for a heal. There's Reclaim on her. Uh, her front should be essentially safe here, and even with a Dirk Snap, it is unlikely that it will do 5 damage because I do have 40% protection, and there's also Bell debuff on the Jester, so he typically does 6 to 11. With the 40% prod, he must be doing like 4 to 9. That's not really value to see any day of the week, but yeah, 4 to 9 with the Bell debuff even less, so he just decides to go for Harvest because he wouldn't do enough either way. But I do get to resist both bullies, which is uh, pretty nice. You know, my characters do have high bullies rest, but. It's not um, it's not uncommon to see your characters failing that bleed resistance regardless, uh, despite of your high bleed resistances. So yeah, I'm gonna drop a Holy Lance there on the Bounty Hunter. Any kind of damage I apply is great here because my team is very slow, right? It's a definitely a defensive kind of um, outlook, a defensive kind of playstyle. So you have to take every little bit you can. That's really the idea behind it. It's like, I'm not doing a lot of stress, but I am slowing you down and I am slowly and steadily applying bellows and getting you closer to afflictions. So I'm gonna crit heal myself here for for 12, which is really great. And that actually gave me the the possibility of going for a flare. Also, you might be noticing I'm playing really fast. It's because after playing so much, I was actually challenging myself to play before the torch even started ticking. So normally you have 30 seconds, right? After the torch starts ticking, you know, like it just does like the little effect. But what I was doing, actually, I was playing before it even started ticking. Like, I wanted to play fast, I wanted to go for fast plays, kind of just practice playing a little bit faster. So when I actually needed the time, I'd be able to think way further than my opponents, you know, just trying to, after a long session, trying to make that, uh, that come in and try to get my instincts more... Uh, more into what I actually want to do rather than just thinking every single action out, just trying to get my instincts to play for me. So yeah, now my flagellant, I kind of have a decision to do here. I could either go for a punish, which either misses the Chester or doesn't play the Crusader. So <laughs> I just decide, you know what, I'll just drop another claim on the Arbal so you just can't go wrong with it. But the problem with it is that my flagellant is going to be taking down closer to an HP amount that the, the Jesser can actually finale, so I do not want to get finaled by round 3 or 4, like that's for sure, I don't want to be down a character, I want to be down a character by like round 7, when I've already gotten an affliction or two, and yeah, when you go down a character with this team, it definitely gets a lot rougher, because you saw in the previous match with Little Ghost, after my character went down, like, I have a lot of tools to prevent characters from going down, but if they don't work, after a character goes down, a critical part of the team goes away. Without the Crusader, I don't have that second direct heal. Without the Arbals, I don't have a way to flare stuns, I don't have a way to, to flare marks, I don't have a way to get a big heal, I don't have a way to cure bleeds. Without the Men Arms, I don't have my my way of actually progressing the match with Bellow, because it's the best offensive ability I have. It reduces their damage and increases their stress, so without him, like, everything is really screwed up. And with Without the flash on, I don't have those huge heals from the Redeem. And speaking of huge heals from the Redeem, you might be seeing in this match that the Crusader, you know, because I do have the Battle Scarred Helm, which gives you plus, uh, I believe, 15% HP and also 5% prod, because I do have that, I actually have a, a humongous 52 health pool. Now, here I'm thinking on what I actually want to do, and yeah, you can see that the torch is definitely ticking down here because right now I didn't need to think. I was thinking, well, I can flare, but after I flare, there's going to be a sniper shot for my entire health bar and then there might be a dark side, there might be a lot of sad things happening right now so I just decided to drop another claim 
essentially what I went through in my mind, like I was thinking so fast last night, I can't even like think everything I was thinking out. Essentially I'd have to rely on the Crusader for going for a heal rather than going for a Zealous, and my Arbals would definitely be put in danger here, should it even get finale, a lot of bad things could happen like immediately. So what I decide to go for is just I drop another claim, knowing that my Flagellant is essentially at a decent enough uh, amount of HP, and my Arbals is going to regen a lot of HP so, too, so we're going to be completely fine. And I think here my opponent kind of drops the ball, going for a finish on the Crusader, like that doesn't really accomplish anything. You have to focus a character down, you have to make my defense uh, feel terrible, and letting me just regen up to 29, go for a flare here, keep my Crusader action, and no character is essentially in danger apart from the Flagellant, sort of. Uh, it's just a very nice situation for me right now, I'm, I'm gonna have to say. But you know, there's always crits, there's always a lot of um, a lot of nastiness that can happen when you're playing against Mark Team. So here I go for Zells, thankfully I'm hitting and I'm doing a very good job at hitting and doing a lot of damage here. And my my Flagellant is still very far away from being possible to, to just drop with a finale because I had 16 HP, the Jester has Bellow debuffed, he only had like 3 to 4 buffs and I have 30% protection. So here I drop a Redeem, I heal the Crusader for 30 because of that huge health pool of 52. And you might be wondering, Shep, isn't that a very preemptive Redeem? Yes, it's definitely a very preemptive Redeem, but considering that the Arbos has 18 re regen on her, or maybe even more than that, considering there's Bellow debuffs applied, and considering that I just managed to bring my characters all to full HP here, like, you just love it, you can't go wrong with this, like, at all. So I am I am taking a lot of bleed right now, which I'm definitely a little bit concerned about. I might heal that away, because Harvest Bleeds are pretty annoying, and there is also a bleed on my Crusader, which is once again pretty damn annoying. But my Man at Arms just keeps spamming those Mellow Debuffs, and, the, and eventually that Arbalist is gonna have to flare, and with a flare means not a sniper shot, so that's always a win for you. And you can flare away the Mellow Debuffs, you can't flare away the stress. So this team is definitely the Mellow Bot kind of idea, just updated to 2022, I'm gonna have to say. So should you try this team out, is, is the question. Ah, uh, it's good, I've had... I've had mixed successes with it because playing against stress teams, like if you play against a stress team with a flagellant and, and like with an occultist, you're just gonna have a terrible time because all your protection trinkets are gonna be meaningless and you're not gonna output stress as quickly as they are. Like it's just really, really, really sad. But if you play against the damage team and you don't get too unlucky like I did in the previous match against the Little Ghost, you can see how hopeless my opponent must feel right now because I'm just crit healing myself for 22. Very unnecessary, but you know, we'll take it. And I get to heal for huge amounts and you're not doing that much damage. God forbid you're actually running exotic snuff on the Arbos because that's just going to be the first match against Adam Beretta all over again. Like, you might have seen that the Arbos did 8 damage against the Mark in that match. Like, that's just nothing. If you play this into a damage team, like, if you play this into something like a Goliath comp, for example, where the Arbos doesn't have marks, where there isn't a lot of disruption, where you have to rely on the Leper to do damage, like, you're just gonna have a field day against a team like that. An absolute field day, because you have Bellow Diva, so that's minus damage, you have a lot of protection, and against a lot of teams you're gonna have a wonderful time, and that's just a really good thing, a really good thing to have. So there's finally a flare here, but I'm getting very, very close to those afflictions. And of course, the flare also means not a sniper shot, so my characters are all essentially safe here. So I go for Zealous, a very, very mediocre Zealous right there. I mean, it does apply in affliction, which is great, but I do barely any damage to the Crusader because he had gotten a crit before, and I missed the Jester. And the damage that I did to the Crusader also only resulted in six stress, so one of the saddest Zealouses you might have ever seen. But right now there's going to be another Harvest, and that's going to be the affliction. So the Jester is going to go masochistic, not the one I was hoping for. I was hoping for a rational, you know, just drop a finale on the Crusader, do like 7 damage and, and just call it a day. I think that would have been really fun there. And I'm thinking how I want to proceed here because I want my Flashlight to stay alive and, uh, and healthy, right? He was taking some bleed from the Reclaims, definitely some heavy bleed, and he was only at like 30 HP, maybe a little bit more than 30, maybe a little bit less than 30 HP. So topping the characters off in a team like this is something that actually does work like it's what you're going for it is literally what you're going for and 
even though I'm going to pass right now, what can the Crusader do? Well, you can essentially delay my action with my own Crusader, like you can remove it, but it's only gonna do like two damage with the stun. You can go for whatever you want with this uh, with this bounty hunter. He's gonna go for a pull, but he fails because I do have the exotic snuff. So of course, if you're greedy enough not to go for grappling mitts on the bounty hunter, then you're also screwed at the same time. And on first round of afflation, there's a pass. So that's already a wonderful outcome for me. I'm gonna drop another bell here. That's gonna be a bell debuff on the bounty hunter. It's gonna be a bell debuff on the arbalist. And as you're gonna see, there's gonna be a hopeless and the arbal so that she get. If she gets fearful right now, I would just surrender, but she gets irrational, which might be even worse, depending on who you ask. Irrational is minus 10% damage permanent, and also a chance to pass, hit other characters, go for any kind of act out, just a lot of nasty, nasty things. So you can see, like, Halo Comp, the pinnacle of meta, like, when people think about the Butcher's Circus, like, people that don't even play the Butcher's Circus, just think, oh, what's the meta? Oh, you know, you know that, that team, like, the Halo Comp, right? Yeah, just people that don't, don't even know that much about the game just go straight into this team and if you run something like this, you're gonna have so much fun. And it is great, it is great. After an evening of um, mixed, uh, mixed results, kind of unsatisfactory victories and uh, and other unsat unsatisfying uh, endings to a match. Getting a match like this was a lot of fun. Making a Halo Mark abuser just a suffer for, for their crimes was definitely great enjoyment for me. So I'm gonna drop a reclaim there on the Man Arms. You want to keep him alive and healthy. You want to keep the Crusader alive and healthy. And I'm gonna spoil it. I don't think uh, Sparta Bull can win this match. Not after you have four afflictions, not after you're at this point. There's gonna be a mark for death here, but how much damage do you think it's gonna do with the Sarbos? She has like at least one Bellow debuff on her. You see, I'm still acting very quickly. You, you, she has at least one Bellow debuff on her. She's gonna, oh, she's gonna move forward. Yeah, that's the rational, so the rational does. So say goodbye to your bounty hunter. She's gonna go for a sniper shot. She has one Bellow debuff. She has the rational. I have 50% protection. She still does 20. Six with a crit, which is definitely a big amount, but considering all the healing actions I have, I should be totally fine here. So now I go for a bleed, which is really important because that counters... I mean, no, I don't go for a bleed. I go for a bandage, which counters the bleed, which was countering my region. So <laughs> I'm countering their counter to my counter, uh, if you can put it that way. So after I use my herbal section, my opponent goes for a very smart uh, stun on the Crusader, and now I can't flare the mark and the stun away, because you know, I've already used my herbal section to clear away the bleed. So yeah, there's that. And this Chester, does he want to finale is the question. He has a lot of finale buffs. I think he might be at maximum number of finale buffs. There's going to be another sniper shot here. Only does 13 this time, which is definitely a much smaller amount, despite having the crit buff for extra damage. But yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and drop another bellow. I failed the debuff, and the Chester has a total of 7 finale buffs. So you, you can't get any more than 7, so he's doing just about as much damage as he, as he can ever hope for. And having only one bell debuff on him is very, very fortunate because I do have the UEI, so I can hit um, relatively reliably, and I can also apply debuffs a lot more reliably than what you usually can. So here I'm thinking, do I want to go for a claim? Do I want to go punish? Well, the thing is, a claim is going to have mixed results. Either it's either the man at arms dies, and then you know you just wasted an action and a heal, or you go for a punish and just lower the chance of damage regardless. So you know I just go for the punish there, considering this masochistic I would likely hit and goes for a finale now how much damage was he actually doing he was at the store he was masochistic so that doesn't matter and he had minus 20 percent damage so how much damage was he actually doing exactly I don't know against my 50 prot I mean 50 prot isn't that much you have to keep that in mind you have to get to values like 70 percent protection if you want your opponent to really really tickle and there's going to be another pass to the crusader I think that pass just signals the match being over here because suppressing fire just kills the gesture immediately we're getting the opponent close to heart attacks and all three of my characters are alive and healthy I have only used up one redeem the arbals is just chilling in the back the enemy arbals is in position two <laughs> Which isn't too good. She's gonna go for a ball, gets a double crit for 4 and 5. Knocks my characters around, but at, at this point, if you wanted to get crits, it was before, it isn't now. I'm gonna drop a punish here on the bounty hunter. I failed the bleed, and even if I had gone with the bleed, you wouldn't have dropped to this store. But one more zealous, and the bounty hunter will be gone. And after this bounty hunter is gone, you're definitely not gonna win. So the act out goes marked for death on the crusader. 
doesn't really matter at all, you can't sniper shot into position 1. And the Zealots right now, as long as it does enough damage, which it doesn't, as long as it did enough damage, it would have killed a bounty hunter, but, you know, it didn't, so uh, the match is going to be prolonged just a little bit. But with a solid punish you or whatever action might come next from your faithful shepherd doggy, the bounty hunter will be taken out, and of course with the bounty hunter taken out, you're gonna have to go for like um, three chances of death plus if you want to reliably get a kill, and even if you do that, yeah. So there's gonna be a stun, do I really care? I mean, you should know at this point what I go for, like, I don't even think about it, I flare. I flare and now I have to punish into that bounty hunter, and after you, you go for that stun and I flare, you can't even go for a heal, because if you go for a heal, you heal up to like 8 HP, I'm probably still gonna punish for your health bar because I'm dropping to below 14 HP and I'm doing a lot of damage. Actually, I'm only doing 4 to 9, but you know, with the with the affliction and me going first next round with the heart attack, the Zealous would have definitely gotten the kill next round anyway, so there wasn't really much you can do. Just went for a mark, goes for a sniper shot now, 28 no crit, because you know, 30% protection is only really 10, and Yarbles just does way too much damage for her own good, but it is it feels really good to punish an Arbals like this, just just taking the pain and just throwing it back at her with bow debuffs like again and again and again. It's gonna be a stunning bow here which I'm not concerned about, but I should be, because even though I have 95% stun resistance from being at this door and having the numbing instance, it is still not enough to resist the stun from the double stun trinket crusader. But anyway, I've just gone for a heal, I've gone for anything. The Flatron could have died here because of the mark, uh, it is definitely a possibility that he died, but Bounty Hunter Corpse is going to go away, and honestly, my Crusader could 1v2 this at this point, like, easily. With half his HP, he could still 1v2 this, so. The Halo Comp is taken down, GG to all three of my opponents, especially Little Ghost. He had a very quirky, a very interesting team, and the offense just worked. I'm going to have to say he got pretty lucky to take out my Mandalorian set early, but, you know, what can you do about it? So, GG to all my opponents, I hope you enjoyed the matches, give this team a try if you want to, expect to have really cool matches, like really fun matches where you make your opponent cry, and expect to cry yourself, because sometimes you're gonna go against DOT, you're gonna go against an Antiquarian with Festering Vapors, and Materia passes and your entire team is gonna melt in four rounds. So anyway, hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you again another time. Cheers!